Star Wars only, I don't know what the fuck your problem is. What's up, Star Wars fans? I am Star Wars Only, and today we're doing our Let's Talk Star Wars podcast number 10, where I answer your guys' questions that you ask me in the community tab of my YouTube channel, so if you have any questions to ask, go there. So the first question, and the most popular question, is by Peter Lobbery. He asks, have you seen the 2003 micro-series for the Clone Wars? If so, which show do you prefer, 2003 or 2008, and which one do you objectively think is better? That's a good question. I did grow up with the 2003 one a little bit before, of course, the 2008 one came out. I mean, that's just how time works. And so when I was watching the 2003 version, the the micro-series, the, there was two episodes, I believe. Yeah, I think both were maybe an hour long, maybe a little shorter, 30 minutes. Maybe an hour in total. I'm not sure. It's been a while since I've seen them. I, I liked them a lot growing up. There were some confusing parts that I, I wasn't too fond of. I didn't like the part where Dooku flew. Like, he, he jumped down and he kind of like use the force to levitate down in a way. It was really weird, and it was like, eh, okay, he doesn't do that in the movies. In the third one, he actually just does a front flip, and that's it, but all right, whatever. I did like General Grievous in that one, though. He was a lot better of a character in the micro-series than he's been in any other um, adaptation, in my opinion, because it actually gave him... He was menacing. I mean, he truly was a, a scary figure in that in, in the micro-series. I believe the one where he captures Palpatine was, was crazy. I mean, he, he took out... A lot of Jedi and clones. I mean, Bear, you know, just his claws and everything. It was really badass, honestly. It was really cool. And, and then, honestly, he kind of died like a bitch in Episode 3. But the micro-series was very entertaining. It was very good. I've always thought it would be better if the prequels would have came out and, and you skip Episode 1 entirely. The Phantom Menace basically never happened, whatever. You start with Attack of the Clones, and then the micro-series basically becomes the second movie in that trilogy, and then the third film is Revenge of the Sith. I personally think that would make the trilogy a lot better, or it would just be an interesting concept, because The Phantom Menace takes place, what, 10, 15 years? No, about 10 years, right? Uh, 10 years before Attack of the Clones. In that jump in time, our main protagonist, who is Anakin, his character has changed so drastically by then, basically, and he's such a different person at that point in terms of age. You know, he's, he's now almost a grown man. And so it really was weird having that big time jump, and it's almost like the Phantom Menace really never happened and it wasn't really that impactful. But anyways, besides all that, The Clone Wars, the show, is far better than the micro-series because it offers more stories, and, and far better stories. You know, the first few seasons of The Clone Wars were kind of rough. The, the movie itself, though, was also pretty bad. If you're comparing it to the movie, then yeah, the micro-series is by far better. And I know people... People who try to defend the movie, I, I, I can't take seriously that often. And I'm not trying to be an ass if you like that movie. But when that movie came out, people try to say that, oh, The Clone Wars was loved all the time. Everyone, no, when that movie came out, no one liked it. I remember seeing that movie when it came out, like opening day. And I was like, why is this a movie? This should have been just a show. And then it was like, oh, it's, it's meant to be into a show. Okay. And then you realize that what it really was was four episodes that they had already filmed and were basically they were just 30 minute episodes each and they just comprised it all they were like oh this would be a better movie this was George Lucas's decision by mind, mind you um, so he put all it together in one movie and made Dave Filoni do it. it 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 was not a good movie i mean i really did not like it going back it, it's hard to watch some of the animation stuff from back then wasn't that good even with the first season of the clone wars but the clone wars show continually got better the micro series you know it was it was one time thing and that was really it but yes i really do enjoy the micro series which one do I think objectively is better? In the end, I would have to say the Clone Wars show because it offers a lot more creativity, in my opinion, and really expands the Star Wars universe and really offers a lot of uh, interesting stories and characters that I like. The micro series was great for its time and perfect for what it led into in Episode 3. That really helped people enjoy Episode 3 a lot more. If you take that away, it, it kind of took away from the prequels as well, in my opinion. The next question is from Mark G. He asks, are you and Geeks and Gamers on good terms now? Yes, uh, me and Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers are completely cool. We've texted back and forth a few times. Uh, we're good. Uh, I, ha I have no ill will towards him. I, I didn't have any ill will towards him for, for a while now. Um, and we, you know, I talked about that in the video and he talked about it in his and everything. I love the response video he had to my, to my fucking response video. Uh, ironic how those work. But because the title was Star Wars Only, I don't know what the fuck your problem is. And I thought that was just perfect. I was like, wow, that's all right. That's a great, that's probably the best title I've ever seen on a video in my entire life. Because I, I love, I, I wish he would have said it. That would have made me laugh a lot more. Because I, I probably would have put that in an intro or two. But um, it was cool just having that title out there. I, I thought that was really, really nice of him. And so, yeah, we're completely good. You know, no no hard feelings or anything. Uh, originally, I was actually planning on deleting the, uh, the Truth About Star Wars YouTubers video before this all happened. Because I wanted to 
change some of the things that I put in and also add a lot more YouTubers. I missed a lot of them, and that are, that really upset me. And um, also, I, I got a few wrong. You know, obviously, I got Yeast and Gamers wrong. Uh, there's a little more about Urban Acolyte that I found out that I didn't know previous to that video, uh, or prior to that video, sorry. So there, there's a lot that I wanted to change in that. So I may go back in this year, maybe even the future next year, and make a new video about that, or delete the old one. I don't know. If y'all want me to delete it, I'll delete it. If not, we'll keep it up. It doesn't matter. But I do plan on redoing that because there's a lot of YouTubers that I missed. So, but in the end, yeah, Mean Geeks Gamers are cool. Uh, Jeremy, I, I do like their channel. I do check them out often. And uh, yeah, good people. This guy named Planet asks, Smash, Mary, Kill, Padme, Leia, Original Trilogy, or Rey? Ah, hmm, this is a very, very tough question to answer. I guess in the end, I would have to say, um, uh, what about the droid attack on the Wookiees? Uh, Mark G asks, is your dad back from the supermarket yet? Is he still stuck in traffic? Oh yeah, did I, did I, tell you, did I say a joke like that? Like, you know, my dad went to the supermarket when I was like three and never came back. Um, <laughs> no, he hasn't, he hasn't come back yet. I think he's still stuck in traffic, yeah. Arthur Wacker, I believe is how you say his name. He's been a long-time fan of the show, or the channel. I don't know why I said show. What the hell? Uh, do you like the Indiana Jones franchise? And if you do, are you looking forward to Indiana Jones 5? Thank you for all your videos, man. I've been a fan since the beginning. Keep up the great work. Thank you for the kind words, Arthur. Honestly, this maybe comes as a shock. I have never seen an Indiana Jones movie. And I know I can hear the people in the comments going crazy. Or people in general, when I tell them I don't, I, I've never seen them, they're like, what? And the reason is I've just, I've never found an interest in them. You know, it, it looks cool, and Harrison Ford's a great actor, and I, I know Steven Spielberg is a great director, and I know George Lucas also worked on it. I believe he wrote the script as well, right? I know he's one of the producers. Uh, I don't know, I've been reading books about it lately, actually, so it's more familiar with me. I, I've just never seen it, and I, I've never cared to. And it's not like I don't want to in general, like I eventually will sit down and watch it. But it's just like, eh, I mean, it looks interesting, but it's one of those things where it's like, you know, if you didn't see it when it came out, it's like, eh, whatever. And I've heard the franchise has kind of gone uh, a wee bit downhill. So, no, I'm not excited for any of Jones 5. I'm happy that they're getting another one. I do, uh, what I do expect from that, though, is that maybe Kathleen Kennedy's last film, remember her contract goes out in 2021. I don't know when this Indiana Jones 5 movie comes out, but if it comes around um, before that or around that time, she may um, retire after that because I know one of the things that I've seen is that she wants to kind of end her career with that one because that's like her baby. She She's one of the big producers as well for the Indiana Jones franchise. It's one of her babies that she worked on for a long time. So I, I would expect her to use that because it'll be her last time working with Steven Spielberg and her husband, who's also really big in the movie industry. It, that, that would be the last time all three of them worked together because I believe it's the last Indiana Jones film. And that would kind of put like a, you know, the last feather in her hat on her career. Be like, all right, you know, I've done it all. And, you know, kind of go off into the sunset and retire. So that may be uh, Kathleen Kennedy's last film. And so that, that would be kind of interesting to see how that goes. But I'm not, I'm not saying that's officially happening. I'm just saying from what I've read and some of the stuff I've seen, that seems to be the way it's going. David and Lena Phillips ask, what do you think the Game of Thrones trilogy will be about? I hope they go back to the Old Republic era like everyone else does. But more than that, I hope they just get away from the original trilogy. I hope they do kind of what Ryan Johnson's doing with his, or what he says he's going to do with his. And let's just go to a different part of the Star Wars universe. But I would want these guys to focus a little more on like the the Jedi and the Sith in a way. I, that's something I've always wanted to see a little more of, you know, the actual Sith Empire. Not just because, you know, it's cool and they're the badass guys, but I want to see a little more about the Sith. I feel like we don't know much about the history of them in terms of Star Wars canon right now. I mean, you know a fair amount, but not everything we'd like to know. Legends covers that a lot more in detail. I, I really would just hope, in general, we can go to a different part of the universe and get away from anything that involves the original trilogy and focus a little more on the Force, I guess. But overall, just something new and creative. That would be really nice. Uh, Darth B.B. Vader asks, and also, what do you think of the Leia episode of Star Wars Galaxy of Adventures? They made Luke look weak and pathetic character and made Leia like Rey. They weren't like that in the originals. The three iconic characters were working together in the originals before the Dark Times, before Kennedy. Okay. I have seen it. I did watch it. And I, I saw it before all the bad reaction happened to it. And I really didn't see a problem with it at first because it was... People are acting like she's drastically out of character. Have you, have you guys not seen the original trilogy in some time? I mean, you look at the scene where she gets rescued by Luke, and, and you know she like does her little eyebrow thing, like, huh? And that's what happened in the movie. You know, she gave him shit. Hey, aren't you a little short to be a stormtrooper? 
And then when they when they kind of escaped from that situation, there was really nowhere they could go. And Leia was the only one to think of shooting the the garbage shoot, you know, getting the garbage shoot, fly boy or whatever. Stuff like that. That actually happened in the film. So I don't know why anyone's getting mad about any of this stuff. The, the only part that I can see people are getting really messed up about or really mad about is when uh, Luke gets himself tangled with a little rope and she pushes him aside and starts shooting. That did not happen in the original trilogy. And that's, you know, fine. That's accurate. Yeah, I, I'd be... It's kind of like, oh, wow, that didn't happen. But all right, well, whatever. But it doesn't make Luke look, look weak. It just makes him look like he, he's, he was a kid then. I mean, he was weak. That's the whole point of A New Hope, is him building as a character. And he's not even the focus of the show, or of the episode. It's about to, it's about Leia, so no crap they're going to make her look... like they, I don't see anyone getting mad at the other shorts for not being as accurate to the original trilogy. You know, L Luke looked weak against Vader. Big, big deal. I mean, it's... It's on Star Wars Kids. It's not meant for all of us to watch it. There's there's Star Wars movies that are meant for every everybody, but when there's something like Star Wars Lego or Star Wars Kids, and it's specifically made for a younger audience, I really couldn't care less what they do with it, because it's not canon. It doesn't really matter that much. And I I really it's one of those things where I'm like you're really just looking for stuff to get mad about at that point. Like I I know a lot of people are always SJ anti SJW. They're like, oh, you get triggered, but you guys are getting kind of triggered over the pettiest and dumbest thing about Star Wars at this point. Like George Lucas was willing to make Star Wars detours. Go look at the clips of that. It is some of the corniest jokes I've ever heard. It's really not that good. But no one's getting mad, and I, it's different because it's different times and different perceptions of who's in charge of Star Wars. I get that. But in general, if it's not meant for you, if it's not made for you, why are you getting mad about it? I mean, there, that's a big part of Star Wars, is getting these corny, crappy little rip-offs sometimes. Look at the, the holiday special. Look at the little Ewok adventures that they made. There's some really bad stuff that comes out from Star Wars from time to time, no matter who's running it. So just don't get so mad about this stuff. It really is not that big of a deal. My God. I, I, don't, I know, I'm not getting mad at you, Darth BB Vader. Don't, don't get me wrong. But I'm just saying the people who are getting mad about it are really overreacting because it's really not that big of a deal. It's just a few minute short YouTube clip meant for kids. Uh, the next question is from RTD Slayer. Even though The Last Jedi was bad, do you think if Ryan makes his trilogy, do you think it's possible he can make a good story and a good movie possibly? In general, yes. You know, I don't. I, I didn't like the writing in The Last Jedi, but I like the cinematography. I, I like the score. It was really good. And there's some good concepts in it. You know, the fallen hero. I like that. It just didn't work with Luke. And I feel like Ryan was also kind of written to a corner with the, at the end of The Force Awakens. I, I remember Ryan saying something about how he didn't really know how to get Luke off the island. Like, he didn't really know where to go from that. And it wasn't... I, I just think in general, the sequel trilogy wasn't planned out properly. Ryan Johnson isn't the worst director in the world. He ironically has directed my least favorite and my favorite episode of Breaking Bad. My least favorite episode of Breaking Bad is the fly episode where they, you know, spend all day in one room trying to catch a fly. A lot of character development happened, though. I will admit that. But it was boring. It was the one episode that wasn't fill that was filler that you could skip and really not miss too much, in my opinion. But he also directed the best episode. I think it's the second to last one. Yeah, I think the second to last episode, I can't, I can't remember how you say it, it's got a unique name, but it is by far one of the best episodes of any show I've ever seen in my entire life. I think Breaking Bad is actually my favorite show of all time, and that episode is by far one of my favorites. If not my favorite, yeah, I did say my favorite, right? Yeah, that's my favorite episode. So he, he's done great with that, and also Looper. I, I love that movie Looper. That I have a lot of fond memories watching that. I remember when it came out, I saw it a few times in theaters with my friends, it was a great time, and it was a really good movie, and I really enjoyed it. But I did not enjoy The Last Jedi at all. I, I really cannot stand that film. So it would be very interesting to see what he does with something that doesn't involve the original trilogy. Because that's, that's what a lot of people have problems with. You know, he's he's breaking all the rules in Star Wars. The hyper hyperspace thing uh, where, where she, Haldo basically rams through Snoke's ship. It's like, why would no one ever in the history of Star Wars ever do that? Like, are you, like, did no one ever think to do that ever? Like, come on. That kind of ruins a lot of what happened in the past. And then same thing with Luke. I don't like his conception of Luke and basically the way he made the character. But if he went to a different part of the Star Wars universe where he doesn't have to really abide by any rules that have already been pre-established, he could possibly come out with a good story. 
So only time will tell. But I'm not betting on it. How about that? Uh, Mace Windu asks, if you could bring back one Legends character, who would it be and why? Darth Plagueis. Simple as that. Awesome character. Awesome book. Deserves a story. Brady Fletcher asks, are you excited for Avengers 4? You know, I am, but I the trailer didn't excite me. Was I the only one who was kind of disappointed? You know, the Infinity War trailer that came out, when that came out, I, I mean, I was pumped. It was like, The music was loud. Everything was just really epic. I was like, this is going to be a good movie. And it was. It was actually, it was actually a really big... Uh, Big move, big thing when it came out. I mean, it's one of the highest grossing films of all time, I believe. So, Avengers 4, the trailer in game, it just didn't excite me. It was just like, oh, okay, well, I'll go see it. I mean, we all will. We all got to know the ending to it. And hopefully, it'll be really good. My, one of my biggest problems with the Infinity War movie was that it basically just led up to Avengers 4. So, it's hard not to be excited for it in a way, you know? Let's see. The entire Infinity War movie was meant to excite you for this one. I mean, that's really all it's been. And all previous, like, 16 films were made to excite you for in the Infinity War, which was made to excite you for Endgame. So it'll be very interesting. Uh, Zach Briggs asks, If Episode Nine turns out to be an excellent film, how can it possibly redeem the qualities of what happened in Episode Seven and Eight? Many would argue the damage is so severe, there's little room to mend. <sighs> they said the same thing about the prequels. Okay, I know a lot of people are going to sit there and say and make these weird arguments of the prequels were really well received when they came out. They weren't. After episode one and after episode two, everybody basically lost hope. And then episode three came out and everybody came out. And some people say, even at the time of the reviews when they came out back in 2005, they're like, hey, that's probably the best one since Empire. So you could see the exact same thing happening with episode nine. You could see, you know, everyone losing hope basically for it, and they go into episode 9 and they're like, hey, you know, that actually wasn't that bad. I went into episode 8 with low expectations, and I, I went into Rogue One with low expectations, and each time I was surprised with my results. Solo, I went into low expectations, and I enjoyed it. So if people go in with low expectations in episode 9, and J.J. Abrams actually does make a pretty good film, let's just argue he makes a great film, an excellent film, let's say it's a solid 8 out of 10, then a lot of people will look back and say, hey, you know, that wasn't too bad. And I think that'll almost, in a way, help the trilogy. Because like I've said with the, the sequels is that I like Episode Seven. I think it's a solid movie. I think it's a decent addition to the Star Wars franchise. And it was a good start to a trilogy. It really set up future possibilities. It really made you intrigued what happened with Episode Eight. Episode Eight didn't make me excited for Episode Nine, sadly. However, if the story's good... And let's say it complements Episode 8. Let's say it complements Episode 7. And really ties things up well together. I, I don't think the uh, the damage is so severe that that can't happen. I, I really don't. It's it's amazing how there's not a title, there's not a trailer, or, or, or you know a story synopsis or anything. And people are already writing it off because of a film that happened you know two years ago by the time this film will be released. And I, I know people really don't like The Last Jedi. Like I've said, my, my a lot of my channel has been based on not liking The Last Jedi. But I'm still not going to be surprised if Episode Nine's good. I've been saying for a while it should be the best. Will it fix all the damage? No. People are still going to be mad about what happened. But it could mend it in a way, like you said. Uh, Matthew Kelly asks, Do why George Lucas hated Mar Jade in a video response to Hello Greedos is Luke Skywalker out of character, since you might not have saw it? I, I'm not, I didn't know that Lucas hated Mar Jade that much. I know he wasn't a fan of all the stories that came out, but I didn't know that he was a... A hater on her at least uh, a video response to hello greedos is this Luke or is Luke Skywalker out of character isn't that like a really old video though wouldn't it be kind of late to make a video about that and haven't I already done enough Luke out of character stuff and I mean if he could if he wants my rebuttal he can just go watch that but I don't think he likes me so I, I don't think I'll ever get to him on uh, uh, like a topic like that so anyways uh O.W. Oren, I believe is how you say it. I don't know how to... Sorry if I got that wrong. He asked, Can you please talk about how so many things Disney have done in the sequel trilogy or ripoffs of the Legends book? Prime example would be Kylo Ren is a version of Jason Solo. I'm not going to read your whole paragraph, buddy. you got to trim it down. No, he's not. Kylo Ren's different. He was manipulated by Snoke. Jason Solo, there was a lot of factors that went into him turning to the dark side. Don't, don't forget his brother died. That kind of helped turn him a little bit. His brother died in the Yuzhan Vong War. You also have the fact that they were raised different. You know, Ben Solo, no, Kylo Ren, basically, he always knew, well, he never knew that his uh, grandfather was Darth Vader until the new book, uh, Bloodline, when it was kind of revealed, leaked to the public and whatnot. Then you have Jason Solo. 
He knew all the whole time his grandfather was was evil and his fault of the dark side. And so they're, they're different stories. They're not. It's not a blatant ripoff just because it's Han's kid. So yeah, no, it's it's unique. It's the same in, in terms of there's some similarities. Yes, there's this, it's got the same name Solo, but as a character, they're completely they're they're really different. Um, fake new TC16 Rodriguez asks, "What the fuck is your problem?" <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. We're a lot. A lot of Star Wars fans get on my nerves. Uh, Banana, I'm going to the store. You want anything? Some Jack Daniels. Yeah, that sounds good. Uh, Ronnie Forbes asks, most underrated and overrated Star Wars character. I feel like I do this in every video. Is it just me? I, I think I've done it before. So, so go check those out if you want to see that. Um, what are the feelings on Star Trek? I'm not a fan of it. I've never really sat down to see it and cared for it too much. I saw. Well, I did see one Star Trek in the Darkness. And I wasn't a fan. I was just like, eh, okay. It's whatever. Like, it wasn't horrible. I just, well, I didn't really get into it that much. Uh, the Bosk asks, will you go see episode 9? Oh, yeah, I'll be there opening night and everything. If I can get in early, I'll go. Uh, mainly just to see what it's like uh, and give you an honest review. I really just want to see it so I can properly judge it. Uh, the Mad Commenter asks, when are you going to release your show, your talk show, The High Ground? That'll be a while. That'll be a while. If you don't know what that is, it's my plan for a future podcast where I actually would, you'd see my face and everything, and you know, I'd have like a nice news desk that would say Star Wars only. And we would do a podcast like this where I'd answer your questions, but I'd also have, you know, a co-host, basically, that I'd want to talk about Star Wars with while we reach the high ground, if you're catching my drift. And uh, the problem with that, though, is that I need a lot of money to get that set up, and I need someone to co-host with me. You know, I don't want to just do that by myself for, you know, an hour or two. I mean, I don't mind, I don't really care. But it would be more interesting having other people on. I really would want to interview people as well. So it'll be a while before that talk show happens. Oh, yeah, it'd be more of a talk show, wouldn't it, than a podcast. So uh, maybe in the future. Maybe in the future. I don't know. Maybe in another year or two. But not this year. Sorry. Devin asks, is Boba more of a threat than Kylo Ren? Eh, not really. Can't use the Force. He got beat by Luke when he was, like, a kid. And then, well, not like a kid. I mean, it was just after New Hope. And then he got um, killed by Han when he was blind. So, not that big of a threat. He did capture Han in a way. He did track him down, give him that. And he is a good bounty hunter. But Kylo Ren has the Force. And he can stop blaster bolts in midair. So that was kind of crazy. But, he got shot by Chewie. And got his ass kicked by Rey. Two times. Wait, two times? No. Uh, General CT says, favorite clone slash legion. I guess, you know, the 501st, it's fine. I mean, I, I don't have a particular favorite clone, but yeah, I mean, that, I guess that'd be the most interesting legion. Uh, that one Smokey asks, are y'all bald? I'm not bald. I don't know who the y'all is that you're asking for. Paul A asks, what is your favorite game of all time that is not Star Wars? That's an easy one for me. Skyrim. Man, I love Skyrim. I think that's a great game. I'm not excited for the Elder Scrolls Six though. Because Fallout 76 was so bad. I think the Elder Scrolls 6 is going to be like really bad. But yeah, Sky Skyrim is definitely, for me, a masterpiece. And I have a lot of fond memories playing that. Crocodile Key Productions asks, Why are the First Order officers idiots? They could have launched those TIE fighters to destroy the Resistance ship in The Last Jedi. Well, the reason they said in the story was, or in the movie, is that they can't cover them. Like, like the ships can't cover. Basically what was happening was the Resistance ships were going so fast and they but they were running out of fuel so they couldn't last too long you know and the first order was chasing them but they but since they're really big ships they can't go as fast as the smaller ships and they can't cover the tie fighters because they would have to go out there and they'd be vulnerable that sounds really boring oh my god but um <laughs> anyways I don't really know why they didn't do it, actually. I mean, I, w I would have done it. And for me, I've always thought of the Empire... It's obvious with Vader that the Empire really doesn't care about the Stormtroopers. I mean, he like he kills them all the time in the Force Unleashed uh, games and books and the comic books in general. I mean, he really doesn't give a damn about his troopers. So he kills them all the time. So I don't know why the First Order doesn't have that same mentality with their troopers of, hey, you know, it's whatever, might as well cannon fodder. I mean, I don't know... If you have the You have basically Snoke's big ship. You can't tell me you don't have... A hundred Tie Fighters that could pot. You took out the you took out the ships. Poe couldn't go out and do anything. So I really don't understand why. Yeah, I really I I don't know. That's that's pretty stupid actually. 
Um, the First Order officers are pretty, pretty, pretty moronic. Uh, Marvel DC Star Wars fan KD, that's a long name. Do you think Ray will kill Kylo? Maybe Kylo kill Finn, then Ray kill him. No, <laughs> that would be really bad. Uh, the reason that would be bad is because um, you don't want Ray killing Kylo in the end because that would mean that. You know, the Jedi, she's a Jedi, she just killed somebody. The reason it didn't work out with that in, you know, Return of the Jedi, Luke didn't kill Vader. Vader died by Palpatine. Luke redeemed Vader in the end. Vader sacrificed, sacrificed his life to save his son and, you know, end the Sith, basically. There's a little more emotion to that. It would be very dark and un-Jedi-like for Rey to kill him in the end, even if he kills Finn. Now, should he kill Finn? Yeah, he should probably kill Finn, Finn or Poe. Get some emotional toll going. That's what we really need in this next one, is to lose a character we actually really care about. Um, I mean, well, we had that in Episode Eight. I just don't think it was executed that well. Now, I'm not saying Lando will die. I don't want Lando to die. But I'm just saying, like, when Finn was about to die in Episode Eight, I thought it was going to be a really good ending to his character. I was like, wow, this is really, this is pretty good. This, this is a good ending. And then Rose had a different idea. And also, I thought, the, I thought Leia's original death, like when she was shot out into space in The Last Jedi, I thought that would have been a great ending. Because I remember when that scene happened, I was baffled. I was like, whoa, they really just killed Leia off like that? I was like, that's, I, I, I mean, well, that's that's not that's not the worst ending. It, that's shocking. It did its job of shocking me, and it was, you know, it's emotional. Like, whoa, my God, they just killed her like that. Like, nothing. What the hell? And then she flew. But I, I do think that um, Kylo may die in the end, but maybe like a sacrifice with, you know, Finn or... Poe sacrificing themselves, or I don't know, I don't know, I don't know who's gonna die. Maybe nobody dies. That'll be interesting if the nobody dies. Uh, Max Arc asks thoughts on the anti SJWs. To me, they're kind of getting annoying. Yeah, I agree with some of them, but they're overdoing it. Yeah, and that, that's what I was saying earlier about the whole Star Wars kids Galaxy of Adventures things. And I agree with you, Max. I, I think they are do overdoing it. I mean, they're overreacting about everything. It's amazing how they get mad at SJWs for getting triggered about what they have to say on Star Wars. But they get triggered a lot about, obviously, the Galaxy of Adventures thing, the Forces of Destiny thing. I feel like you were a little more valid to say, hey, that's not good content. But to get mad about it and be like, oh, my God, this is ruining Star Wars, for me, is a, is a little dramatic, in a way. Yeah, I mean, you even look at, like I said, how they're treating Episode Nine. People are like, oh, it's, it's going to be awful. It's trash. And it's like, you haven't seen anything about it. You're not even judging a book by its cover. The book doesn't even have a cover. The book has an idea, and you're like, no. No, thank you. Like, come on. Like, good guy. Like, I'm tired of the whole Star Wars is dead, but I'm going to talk about it being dead every day for, you know, since 2017 up until 2019 and maybe even 2020, depending on how the films go. I'm going to talk about that every day. But Star Wars is dead, yet I'm still talking. I mean, it just gets annoying. Like, if you're going to hate on Star Wars, if you have valid criticisms, yes, by all means, that's fine. I mean, I really don't mind people having valid criticisms about what happened with Star Wars in the past. I have a lot of criticisms about The Last Jedi, but if you're just going to harp on it every day, then, then I mean, why, why talk about it? I mean, good God, get, get over it in a way. I mean, shit. It does get annoying. It really does get annoying. King Griffinhammer asks... Which character from The Office would be most successful in the Star Wars world? Uh, probably Dwight, maybe? Dwight's got a interesting set of skills. He does karate, right? Yeah, he did karate. And uh, he's the best paper salesman of all time, from what I hear. At least in the region. So, yeah, Dwight probably uh, would be the best one. Wes the Remote asks, How would you feel if Kylo and Rey were revealed to be brother and sister in Episode Nine? I wouldn't like that. Because then that kind of ruins... Han and Leia's character a little more because it's like, wow, y'all were really bad parents. Y'all just dropped her off. And then it's like, well, then Kylo Ren lied in episode eight about her being a nobody. And I'm completely fine with her being a nobody. But you built her up to be a somebody in episode seven. So what What the hell? <laughs> I don't think episode nine should end with them being related. That would be really weird for me. Uh, Darth BB Vader asked another question. Hey, Star Wars only. How you doing, bro? I saw Alita Battle Angel. It's a good movie. She's a female character. You're not asking me a question, but you are you are saying that it's a good movie. If it's a good movie, I'll probably take your word for it, and I may go see it. And I am doing well. Thank you very much. The Cut Promo TCP says, I really enjoy how you endorse Skywalker and involve your viewers. If you were to give any advice to someone wanting to start their own Star Wars channel, what would your advice be? Be unique. 
everyone does a lore, and that, that really annoys me. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I like Legends, and I like a lot of the lore stuff that these people cover, but everybody does it. I mean, there's probably like 20 Star Wars channels that do that. So just be unique, and don't expect money anytime soon. I mean, I'm not going to say you don't make money. I mean, everyone you know, eventually do make money, but don't go in it for the money. I know it's a common saying that everyone says when you're starting a YouTube channel, but you have to have some passion before it in order to make money. You know, you can't just go into this being like, hey, I want this to be a job. It takes a while to make this a job. You have to you have to do everything just right. And you have to accept criticism and compliments. And you have to kind of roll with the punches in a way on that. This one wise guy once said, the people who take insults to heart are the same ones who take compliments or let compliments go to their head. Which basically means, you know, you take a compliment, you make sure, let you build your ego, but you get hurt by the insults. You know, you're, you're, you're too sensitive. Don't let stuff like that happen. It's the internet. You're going to get shit no matter what. And I'm not saying you can't take compliments and be appreciative. And, you know, you have to deal with criticism in any way you can. But don't expect it all to be smooth sailing. It's not as fun as people will make it out to be. It is fun. I have a great time doing it. But it's, it's a job. It does become a job. If you want to make it a job, it will be a job. And you have to treat it as such. So you have to be motivated. You have to stay dedicated to it. It's just like anything else. It takes time, it takes patience, and a lot of people don't have the patience for YouTube. And that's fine. Some people don't have the talent for it. I don't have like the talent to make you know a, a million subscribers overnight. A lot of people are far more talented at it than I am. So find your talent, use it, and do whatever you can with it. Uh, they ask another question. Also, what are your thoughts on would you be interested in seeing uh, Ahsoka making her live action debut? No, I don't want to see Ahsoka on the big screen. I, I think she's a great character in The Clone Wars. And that's it. I don't like her in the Rebels. I don't like her surviving Rebels because it makes me it makes me like go, why would you not help out Luke or Yoda or Obi Wan? I mean, you. I mean, that's that's not in my opinion. That's a moral flaw of her trying to be on the light side of the Force. It's like, well, shouldn't you try to help out, help beat the dark side? I mean, come on. That's I, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of all of that. I, I wouldn't want to see her in a live action film. I don't know who would play her. I don't know how they would execute that. It would be interesting, but I, I, I personally wouldn't like it. That's just me, though. Uh, that gamer pro 97 asks, Please help me. I keep hearing the milky cow sound from the last shit I my head off. Oh, ew, yeah, that scene was weird. Metalhead Retro Gamer asks, If you were to write an alternate version of Episode 7 that would bridge a 30-year gap, what would your story be? Man, it's hard asking me those questions because there's so many different possibilities that you could go to. I don't know, man. I, I can't give you an answer on that, man. I've, I've done it so many times, I can't think of a... I can't just think of a story right at the bat. Uh, Hydra Agent Zero asks, How will real Sith Lords affect Kylo in Episode Nine? Well, what are you talking about, real Sith Lords? You talking about, like, Darth Bane? Plagueis? Sidious? That'd be pretty cool. I don't know. I don't... I, don't, I think it would be really cool if he could run into one or two of them, like Darth Revan, or uh, the son from Mortis, from the Mortis art. That would be really cool. But I'm not sure if they're going to affect him in any way. I don't remember the big arc, the big story with the dark side in the new trilogy is that the Sith are no more. The Sith are dead. You know, Kylo Ren's not the Sith. He's just a dark side. He's a, he's a Ren. He's a Knight of Ren. Uh, Jeremy, oh, Jeffrey Plumley, I don't know how to say it. What's your favorite Star Wars game? Probably Battlefront 2, by far. The, the original Battlefront 2 is definitely a great one. Knights of the Republic 1 is also really good. Oh, man, there's so many. There's so many. The Lego Star Wars, really good too. Just I'm gonna have to stick with Battlefront too, though. To keep it simple. Tacky Flower, 1868 asks, "What's your opinion on the Captain Marvel backlash from the new trailer?" I saw the first two trailers, and then after that, I was just like, "Okay." And, and the reason I'm not watching it is not because I don't care that it's a female, you know, lead or anything like that. It's simply because I'm tired of Marvel movies at this point. It is the same thing every time: generic villain, generic action, generic story. And the hero wins in the end, and, and that's really it. Thor Ragnarok was good. There's not any of the Iron Man films that I actually really enjoy. That I can, I mean, there's just not a lot of Marvel films that I'm like, oh, this is a great film. There's a few, and then there's, there's definitely some good films, but a, a lot of them are just the same thing over and over again. So I'm tired of Marvel movies, honestly. I didn't see Doctor Strange when it came out. I saw Ant-Man and the Wasp. It was horrible. It was a very boring film. It wasn't funny at all. And Spider-Man, that was good. I'll, I'll probably see the next Spider-Man Homecoming, but I think I've said it before. After Endgame, I'm done. I'm done with Marvel. I, I grew up watching it now. I, I've, I've lived through the superhero era. 
and I'm tired of it. I really am tired of it. So, yeah, I'm sorry. It's not because I, I don't know much about the backlash. I'm not sure why people don't like her as a character. She's exactly like she seems to be in the comics, in my opinion. So I, I don't know much about her, though. I do know she's really OP, and I will be really annoyed if she ends up in Avengers 4 Endgame and saves the world, because it's like, bro, you just brought this character out of nowhere, and she just wrecked Thanos, who you've been building up since, like, 2008 or something like that. It's been, it's been a while. So I would be annoyed if she just came in the last second and, you know, fucked everybody up. But I don't know anything about her character, and I, I just I don't really care about Marvel movies after Endgame. Uh, after that, I'm like, I don't care. I'm sorry. I don't care if you make a Hawkeye movie, a Black Widow movie. You can bring Thor back for another one. You make the last Captain America movie. I, I really just, I wouldn't care anymore. I'd be like, all right, I'm done. So, sorry. I hate to be negative like that, but I'm, I'm just tired of them. And for Papa Memes says, imagine a sort of ho horror, not hollow. Why did I say hollow? A horror Star Wars film where clone troopers and one Padawan Jedi are stranded on an island. General Grievous is hunting them down and they have to survive. What do you think about that? Interesting idea for a show, maybe a spinoff. Nah, not really a spinoff. That would be kind of boring, too. I mean, it's not like it's a bad idea. It's just not something I would say should be made into a film. You know? What's the story you're going to take away from that? It's just not anything I particularly would be that interested in. Not saying it's a bad idea. Like I said, it'd be a good show. Put that in Clone Wars. Make a make an episode or two. That'd be beautiful. It'd be amazing. But it'd also be a, a mimic of the... Uh, Grievous episode where they go to his home. Count Dooku kind of sets up a trap for him and the, the Jedi come in and he kills him. Kit Fisto gets away. That was a cool story. So that's that for me, that was enough. But, I mean, it's not a bad idea, though. It's something that should have happened, at least. Uh, David Clint asks, What do you think of Elon Musk visiting the set of The Mandalorian? Musk has been a few John, Ca John Favreau's movies like Iron Man 2 and maybe a new cameo in the new series. I definitely think he's going to make a cameo. How big of a deal it will be, I don't know, but I definitely think Elon Musk will make a cameo in The Mandalorian, especially with him being on set and having that gun. That was pretty, that was pretty cool looking. Uh, I draw crappy fan art. Do you think Obi-Wan is an actual master of the low ground rather than the high? Uh, maybe he's, maybe, no, I think he's master of the high ground. I mean, you can't jump down from a building that high and land in the middle of all those droids and simply say hello there and act like you're not a master of the, of the high ground. David Clint asks, do you think rumors that the Clone Wars may get released... Oh. David Clint says again, there are rumors that Clone Wars may get released in early 2020. What do you think? No. there's, there's Those rumors uh, don't have any validity behind them, believe me. Uh, stuff like that just thrown out there all the damn time. I don't think there's a plan for a Clone Wars 2020 release if you're talking about a movie. I, don't, I mean, I really couldn't imagine them making a movie about that. But, um... Uh, show sure uh, you know continue episode or season eight by all means go ahead but not a movie uh, aaron k asks have you seen avatar the last airbender and did you know that dave filoni directed nine episodes from the first season oh yeah i watched avatar the last airbender all the time as a kid great show uh, great story i mean it, it's definitely one of those shows that i look back on you know, there's a lot of shows that you know you look at when you grew up and you're like oh that was pretty bad but avatar the last airbender definitely was a really creative show I think I saw something about it yesterday, actually, that, ironically, that you asked this, but, um, it's a very good show, very good show, yeah, love that show, and I know Dave Filoni was involved with it. Uh, Lord Arnold asks, uh, a repetitive amount of Star Wars questions, who is Rey? Rey is Rey. Uh, what happens to Kira and Maul? I don't know, I, I would assume in the end he'd probably kill her. Where is Yoda from? Oh. His, isn't his species like unknown isn't that isn't that the uniqueness about it I think that's the thing uh, did Boba escape the Sarlacc I would say no but I, I probably would believe that they're gonna make him escape it just because everyone likes him so much who did he incinerate I don't know I, I, I don't know the legends behind that why did Luke give up on his nephew that I definitely don't know I, I don't agree with that at all I don't agree how he just gave up on his nephew like that did Han cheat on Leia? No, I don't think so. If he did, that, that ruins his character and really ruins the love story that was built in episode uh, 4, 5, and 6. Uh, is Rey his bastard child? No, that would be really bad. Uh, Gubber 1, I believe is how you say it. How many happy landings has Obi-Wan had? When was his first happy landing? Ooh, his first happy landing was 
when he landed in the Trade Federation thing in episode one. You know, when, when they were the, the very opening scene where they land in the Trade Federation ship, you know, it was happy because nothing happened yet. Ryan McCarthy asks, do you think episode nine should end in a tragedy with a beacon of hope like uh, Revenge of the Sith did? No, because the problem with that would be is that it's the conclusion to the Skywalker saga and it's just like, oh, that's it? Well, okay. I think an interesting way they could end it would be a potential setup for other films that aren't about the Skywalker saga, that that aren't about the Skywalker bloodline, and just about Jedi and Sith that go into a new trilogy or something like that, maybe in 10, 15 years, sure. That would be interesting if they, in a way, set up for future stuff, but not anything with the Skywalkers or anything, um, and definitely don't end it on a bleak note of, oh, it's all over. Like, you, maybe you have, like, a bad guy who's, like, a Sith who escapes or something like that, and it's like, oh, in the future, he may prove a problem, but the Skywalker bloodline's over. But I don't know. Maybe you don't go into the future, because Star Wars is a fairy tale. I, I hate when people say it's a sci-fi, because it's not. It wasn't written for to be a sci-fi. Star Wars is a fairy tale, so it's supposed to end on a happy note. It's supposed to be a happy ending. Why do you think Re- Return of the Jedi was happy? So yeah, you definitely need to end it on a happy note. Don't 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 end episode nine on a dark, bleak note. That wouldn't be the end of a good fairy tale. Uh, the Church of JJ asks, "What kind of reaction do you think episode nine will get from the fans?" I would hope it'd be a good reaction if it's a good film. If it's not, then you know, it sucks. But I think right now you have two set in stone reactions. One is from the people who don't like modern day Star Wars. The the anti Disney crowd is what you could call them, or what I call them. I think they're gonna hate the film no matter what. Then you have the people who like modern day Star Wars, the pro Disney crowd is what I call them, and they're probably gonna love it no matter what. You know, you have those people who likes anything that comes out from Star Wars, just anything, and that's fine. But it doesn't make me take your opinion very seriously. So no matter what, you're gonna get people who like the film who don't like it. That's just set in stone. People are gonna love it and gonna hate it. As the casual audience is what I kind of would look more towards to see how people liked it in general. I feel like they'll like it. And if it's a good film, I think you'll have positive reactions. I think that's how the fans will react to it. I think they'll be happy and say, hey, you know, this should have been how episode... This should have been the entire trilogy. You know, why wasn't the entire trilogy like this or something? If it's good. But that's it's a lot of what ifs, you know? This guy named Evil95 asks, is the book Darth Plague is considered canon? No. I, I, he says that people mention specific events that take place in the Plagueis uh, books found in Tarkin and the Catalyst. Yeah, no, uh, Darth Plagueis is not canon, but they do mention some stuff from his name, kind of like they do with Darth Bane uh, in The Clone Wars. His story, his book, is not canon, but Darth Bane, the character, is canon, and what he did, creating the Rule of Two, is canon, but not the story of how it all happened. Carmel Cat asks, What would you want from a trilogy of older public movies? as I'm currently writing my own version and I need some ideas. I've always liked the idea, If you're, I mean, I've said it before, If you, but if you need something to write, here's my personal idea for the Old Republic. You kind of have it starting at the beginning of the Republic, you know, like, it's just forming. One cool idea you could do for the Old Republic is, you know, just do something with the Mandalorians. You know, have the Sith and the Mandalorians go at it, and that be the story. You don't even involve the Jedi. You just have the Mandalorian, uh, like, 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 literally... The main character would be a Mandalorian, and you make a trilogy off their perspective of the war against the Sith. That'd be pretty cool. So you could do something like that. Uh, Death Trooper six three seven asks, "What do you think will be the best and worst thing from Star Wars this year?" The best thing from Star Wars this year is probably going to be the Mandalorian. And in, in the end of it all, I think that'll be the best thing. The worst thing I'm fearing is going to be Respawn's Jedi Fallen Order game. I, I'm scared that's just not going to be the one to hit the mark. But I'm hopeful for it. I'm more excited for that one than I am... I'm more excited for that game than I was for Battlefront 1 or Battlefront 2 by EA. By far. Death Trooper 637 asks, What do you think will be the best and worst thing from Star Wars this year? I think the best thing will probably end up being either The Mandalorian or Episode 9. And I think the worst thing will probably be Jedi Fallen Order. And that's not to say Jedi Fallen Order is not going to be good. I'm just saying in general that's just going to be the one thing that's like, Oh, well, okay. You know, it wasn't as good as the other things, which is fine. I do hope it's a good game, but I am nervous because it is EA. I wasn't happy with Battlefront 1 or 2. I wasn't even really that excited for them compared to how excited I am for Jedi Fallen Order in terms of you know what I would look for into a story. I was I was really pumped up for Battlefront 1 and 2, actually. But with Jedi Fallen Order, I expect a little more, in a way. I expect to be pleasantly surprised. 
man, we never know. So we'll have to see. Uh, Joe does stuff. Ask joke question first, relevant question second. Uh, joke question: Star Wars. Do you know what the fuck your problem is? I do know what my problem is. I do know what the fuck my problem is. But do you know what the problem is? What my problem is? What? What, what am I saying? Uh, his real question though is: What were some justified slash pointless changes made to the original trilogy in your opinion? First of all, why did Han not shoot first? Why did you make Greedo shoot and then Han move his head to the side? That was a pointless and unjustified change, in my opinion. Uh, some of the justified changes were Emperor Palpatine in Episode Five. His face was like uh, it was a lady with like molding or whatever. I can't remember exactly. That was a justified change because that looked pretty bad. Another justified change would be some of the editing. Over, like in Episode Five, they add a like well, not editing really. It's a CGI, but they add some backdrop to like Cloud City, give it a little more life. I like that. I like the ending to Return of the Jedi more in the special edition than I do the original, but but not the Hayden Ghost. I don't like the Hayden Ghost, and I also don't like a lot of the um, like special effects that they got rid of from the original trilogy because the original trilogy, you know, from A New Hope, that won an Oscar for editing and special effects. Uh, well, maybe not editing, but I, d I definitely know it got a special effects Oscar. Why would you remove that? Like, it's if it ain't broke, you don't fix it, you know? So that was kind of annoying. The Another point list was the Vader no at the end of Return of the Jedi. Like, they added that in for some reason. That was pretty stupid. Uh, justify change. I can't think of another one at the moment, so th those are the ones I got off the top of my head. Uh, Winston She asked, what is your response to Sean Chandler's response to Star Wars 7 news? That's old news as well, man. He made that video a while back. It'd be kind of pointless to make a response video to it, don't you think? But if y'all want me to, I will. I mean, if everybody says, hey, make one, I'll do it. This guy named Richard asked, the stuff going on with Johnson's trilogy being canceled or delayed with green light, anybody really know what's going on, or is Johnson trolling with the fans? There are some people who know what's going on. I don't think a lot of Star Wars fans know what's going on. Um, in general, though, the trilogy's still happening. It may not happen as soon as people are thinking. Maybe in 2025, it'll happen. But overall, it's still happening. Johnson's still making his trilogy. He's not trolling anybody. He's, he's really making it. It might change in the future. We never know what could happen. But right now, yes, Ryan Johnson is still making his Star Wars trilogy. Gunston Johnson, I believe is how you say it. If you can make a Star Wars animated series, what would it be? Oh, that's a good question. An animated Star Wars series. Whew, where would I go? What would I do? Oh, here's a good idea. How about we do Luke's Jedi Academy in an animated version? Kind of like the Clone Wars, right before the um, prequels. Well, no, right before Episode 3. You could do something like that with an animated show about Luke's Jedi Knight Academy. That would be really cool. And just follow, like, maybe make the main character one of the Jedis that, you know, just died at the end when Kylo killed them all. Maybe make that the character that you follow. But that, that would be really cool in general, though. Come on, Disney. Do it. I don't know how to say this guy's name, but he asks, what are your thoughts on the concept art for Episode Nine that was just recently revealed? It looked cool. Everything looked as expected. Nothing too unique or crazy. I wasn't baffled by it. I was just like, oh, okay. That's what the characters are going to look like. So I'm content with it. They, they look fine. Smith Wesson asks, what if Starkiller remained on the dark side throughout the entirety of the Force Unleashed duology? He would definitely die. <laughs> In the end of it all, he would definitely probably die at the hands of Vader. And um, that would be it. I mean, honestly. I mean, the question is, does he does he betray Vader still? Or, or I mean, Vader betrayed him in a way. I, I don't know what would happen. It, I mean, you saw what happened with him on um in the expansion pack, right? Remember the uh, Sith? Oh, my God. Y'all remember the Sith, uh, the Force Unleashed, like, Sith edition? You know how badass that thing was? I remember buying that. That was so cool. But, yeah, that's what would happen. He, he went to Endor... He killed Luke on Hoth in Episode 5, and then he killed Leia, who was a Jedi, in Episode 6, and he also killed Han and Chewie, I believe. So yeah, that's what would happen if he stayed on, if he stayed evil the entire time. Because he'd probably kill Vader in the end, because that's what the Emperor would want. Footless Moon Badger asks, if you were in the Star Wars universe, which side would you take in the Third Galactic Civil War, the Resistance, or the First Order? Well, who said this is the third one, buddy? And also, I'd probably have to pick the Resistance. I'm not a big fan of authoritarian governments like the First Order, just ruling my life and everything. But uh, I don't really know what the Resistance stands for that much either, other than that they don't like the First Order. So 
I'd have to go with Resistance, man. I like Leia. I like the Jedi. I like what they stand for. Oh yeah, they stand for the Force. Yeah. I'd definitely have to pick the Resistance. It'd be stupid if I didn't. Armin Tabri, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Is it true that they're trying to undo Episode Eight from the leaks I heard? They're not going to undo Episode Eight. I would expect them to just kind of stay away from Episode Eight. You know, just kind of go a different route that doesn't mention it or revolve around it too, too much, you know? So, not undoing it, just kind of distancing, distancing itself. Kind of like Attack of the Clones distance itself from The Phantom Menace. It's mentioned, some of the stuff's mentioned a little bit in Attack of the Clones, but it isn't a big part of the movie, you know? Uh, Baxter asks, do you think Lando will survive Episode Nine? Yes, I actually think he would be the guy who does survive it in the end. Or maybe Kylo Ren kills him. I really want to see Lando and Kylo Ren interact with each other. That would be interesting. Because, you know, Lando would probably know Kylo from childhood. I would hope he would. Uh, Maxwell James asks, are you excited for the new Clone Wars season? I am. I am. I'm definitely interested in seeing that. I'll definitely review it. I probably need to review some of the other Clone Wars stuff before that comes out. Get the hype going. But I'm definitely excited for that. Rev asks, did you ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? Yes, I have. Many times, my friend. I tell it from time to time as well. This one guy asked, should Disney sell Star Wars and Lucasfilm back to George Lucas? That's a good one. Uh, no, they, they shouldn't, and they definitely wouldn't. Uh, they got a really good deal paying him $4 billion for it because they made all that money back real quick. I don't think they're going to ever sell it back to him, though. I don't even know how he would afford it. I don't even know why they would sell it back to him in general. I mean, why, would, why, would they, why would Disney want to sell it? You know how much money they can make from that and how much money they are making from it? I know some people are going to disagree with me on certain stuff, but you know the the movies that came out recently have all made tremendous money, despite Solo, a Star Wars story. That's the only one that flopped, but everything else made a lot of money. So they're definitely not going to get rid of it anytime soon, and they definitely wouldn't sell it back to Lucas. If they sold it to anybody, I don't even I, I don't think there's a company out there right now that would buy it and be able to sell it. Disney is about to rule everything. They're about to get Fox. You know how crazy that is? They're going to own 20th Century Fox. I, that's, I mean, Jesus. Art Trooper Maze asks, do you feel like the actors involved in the prequels and sequels deserve the hate they got? No, none of them ever deserve any of the hate they get. Uh, these, these, are pe these are people. I know the characters on the screen may not be something you like, but these are people. Ahmed Best got a lot of crap for his character Jar Jar. Jake Lloyd got a lot of crap for his character as Anakin. Daisy Ridley's getting crap for Rey. Kelly Marie Tran got a lot of crap for her character of Rose. So they, do, they don't deserve the crap they get, but they, they sadly end up with it. Hayden got a lot of crap for his character of Anakin in the first in the first trilogy, the uh, prequel trilogy. So there's a lot of stuff that goes on like that, and it's just something that, sadly, actors have to deal with. Do they deserve it? Absolutely not. These are just people like us. I don't care if you don't agree with their opinions, or their Star Wars opinions, or how they play their character. They're still a human being, and there's no point of being an ass just because you didn't like the movie they were in. I mean, come on. And don't get me wrong, though. I understand not liking some of these movies, but just being an ass for no reason, it's just weird. A long den or whatever, I don't know how to say, 77 ask, why do you think the mood has changed over the years for the prequels? Will the same happen to the sequels? Love your channel. Thank you. I don't... I mean, in, in general, yes, the sequels will have a changed perception, but it's not because of what you think. It's not because these films are aging and getting better. They're not like wine and they get better over time. All that's happening is people who grew up with the prequels are now grown up, because it's been almost 20 years, and since they grew up with the prequels, they're like, hey, I like that because it was part of my childhood. In 20 years, the people who grew up with the sequels are going to come out and say, hey, I like that because it was a big part of my childhood. So that, that's all that's ever going to happen. And, and it's, it's for me, one of the most baffling things is the prequel fans, and it's not all of them, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a portion of the fan base, though. It's a really big portion of the prequel fan base who are always saying, like, the original trilogy fans ruined Star Wars because they gave George Lucas so much crap because of the prequels and everything. And it's like, okay, well, they just generally did not like the film. Like, any of them. They didn't like them. That's why they gave George Lucas crap for it. They were like, hey, these are bad. And George Lucas sold the rights to Star Wars for it. And what's ironic is they're doing the same thing with the sequels. There are people, like the prequel fans, who generally do not like the sequels. But they are giving the exact same crap to the people who are making Star Wars now that the original trilogy fans did back in the day to the prequels. I mean, it really is history repeating itself. It is the funniest thing ever to watch happening in real time. 
Because I, 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 I'm the guy who really does study the history of Star Wars almost 24-7. I read books about this stuff on the daily. And I, I own the documentaries and all that. I, I watch a lot of this stuff and I research all this all the time. People really don't understand that this is really just history repeating itself. It is the funniest fucking thing I've seen in a long time. And it's, it's amazing how ignorant a lot of them are saying of, oh, no, it's different with George Lucas. Oh, it was different back then. The backlash back then wasn't as bad now. The only reason the backlash today is a lot different from what it was now is because people have grown and we have more technology and social media. There's more people on the earth than there were 40 years ago, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, and 10 years ago. That is the only reason it is bigger now. It, Star Wars has grown as time has gone on. Now, the interest has definitely died out in the recent years. But overall, it's it's really just history repeating itself. I, I mean, I swear to God it is. John Patton asks, which big Star Wars YouTubers would you like to interview, and what would you want to ask them? Uh, some of them I'd like to interview would probably be... There's a lot of them. Uh, let's see, Grey Jedi. Ethan Nova, I believe is how you say it. I like both of those guys. Jin Sarai. Who else is there? Star Wars Theory. He'd be cool. Thor Skywalker. Jeremy from Geeks and Gamers. Uh, who else is there? I've already talked to uh, my friend Ned Alliance. I like him a lot. But if I could interview him, sure. I, I like him as well. Who else is out there that I, I want to talk to? Mm, maybe Hello Greedo. I don't know. There, there's, there's a decent chunk of Star Wars fans out there. Anybody and everybody, honestly. I'd interview all of them if I could. This one guy asked, why has Star Wars gone downhill so fast? Well, the biggest problem with 2018 was there was no Star Wars that really was interesting. You had Solo Star Wars Story coming out in May, and that was it. You didn't have any content other than that. So it was kind of boring for a lot of fans. I mean, with Star Wars supposed to be alive and well with Disney coming back and putting out a film almost every year and putting out all this new content, it was kind of weird having 2018, and even we're a few months into 2019 now, it's been a while since we've had some good Star Wars content. It's just kind of been like, eh. You know, Rebels is over. Resistance started, but that's not for all Star Wars fans. That's for a select minority of the... Well, not a minority, but it's it's for the the children. You know, it's for the kids. Star Wars Resistance has come out, but that's, that's more geared towards kids. It's not for the entire Star Wars fan base like Clone Wars and Rebels kind of was. Yeah, those two weren't really meant for everybody as well. But in the end... It's just been the lack of content, and for a lot of people, the lack of quality content. And then the response to that criticism of the content that's been released. So there's just a lot of factors. Uh, Justin Van Volkenberg, I believe is how you say it. What are your favorite vehicles from Star Wars? I don't really have one. I'm not a big... I don't really care about the vehicles too much, honestly. Uh, Dylan Films asks, what do you think needs to happen in Episode Nine to redeem itself? There's a lot that it has to do right. What, what I think it should really focus on is... Ending it on a on a course a proper note, but ending it on a happy note, and on a, on a tearful note, kind of like how at the end of Return of the Jedi, you're like, dang, this kind of you know it's emotional, and you're happy, it's happy tears. You want it, you want that at the end of Episode Nine. You, you want the Force Ghost of Luke Skywalker, of for some people even Anakin Skywalker. You want something like that. You want something that's really gonna touch everyone's hearts and actually make them you know tear up a little bit and go, hey, that was a good movie. That was a good ending to the Skywalker saga. This is the end of what we know as Star Wars. Because this is the end of the Skywalker saga. That's, that's what it's always been about. The original trilogy was about Luke Skywalker. The prequel trilogy was about Anakin Skywalker. This one's about Ben Solo, but you know he's related to the Skywalkers because he's because he's the grandson of Darth Vader. So, so you have to kind of end it with all of that. You have to end the entire story as we know it. And the other trilogies that are going to come out, those are going to be about different stories, which is fine. But you have to end it on a good note. You have to end it where everyone's like, all right, that feels like a conclusive ending to the Skywalker name. And I'm fine with that. But I don't know. We'll see how it goes. It'll be very, very interesting to see if it tries to do anything different from what The Last Jedi was going for. You know, in the direction The Last Jedi was kind of heading was like, all right, well, now what's next? Uh, you know, the resistance is crippled, they have to come back, they have to defeat the First Order. How are they going to do that in Episode Nine, when, you know, they're ending on such a, a, a sad note? Kind of like they ended in the, what was it, Empire Strikes Back, they ended that on a very down note. That's that's kind of how we're looking at Episode Nine of like, how are you going to get back and end it on a happy note? What, what's going to happen? So, be very interesting to see. Ronnie Coleman asks, cringiest Star Wars moment? 
Easily, the one that I can think of right now is it's between two. It's when Rose kisses Finn in The Last Jedi, and the scene in Attack of the Clones where Anakin and Padme are frolicking in the fields. I hate that scene <laughs> so much. The way Anakin talks to her is so weird, and he, he like you also have the sand scene that comes shortly after that, I think, or no. Is it after or before? I think it's. I think the sand scene's before that, yeah. And so, they're frolicking in the field, right? And Anakin's, like, talking to her about senator stuff. And he's like, oh, he's like, no, I, I would never, you know, insult a senator or something like that. And he, he's like, ah, ha, ha, ha. Like, his laugh is so bad. It, ugh, I hate that scene. And I cringe almost that entire duration of that love story in Attack of the Clones. But I also cringe really bad at The Last Jedi when Rose kisses Finn. That was awful. I have a clear memory of that because, you know, it was two years ago and I remember watching it live. And I was just like, wow. Alright, Finn's about to die. Oh my god, there's Rose coming in on a ship. What the fuck? And she, she runs into him. And, and he's like, Rose, what'd you do? Why would you do that? I'm like, okay, okay. That was pretty weird. Oh my god, they're about to die. The first order's right there. And he's like... <laughs> he asks her, he's like, why would you do that? And she's like... She's like, I was saving you, dummy. <laughs> and she tells him, that's how we're going to win this. Not <laughs> by destroying what we hate, but saving what we love. <laughs> and then she kisses him. And he doesn't even, like, kiss her back. He, like, I don't even, he doesn't even pucker his lips. He just looks at her, he's like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> And I'm in the audience going, what the fuck am I watching? <laughs> oh my god, I'm sorry. Oh my god. That was that was one of the funniest... It was like one of those things where it was so cringy. I, I, I didn't laugh. I was just like, what the... What is going on here? Are you kidding me? Yeah, that... Yeah, I'm sorry. That does take the cake. I'm sorry, George. I'm sorry. I, I can't say Attack of the Clones. I mean, maybe it was when I like if if I was like, how old was I when the fans when when um the last shit I came out? Uh, seventeen? Was I eighteen? If if I was you know eighteen or nineteen when the fan then when Attack of the Clones came out and I, I saw the cringy stuff in that, I may say that was probably more cringy than the Rose thing. But dude, being being a full grown up watching that Rose Tico scene. Oh man, I was cringing hard. Uh. So definitely the last but not least question is from Dictator Greg. That's an interesting name, buddy. Favorite type of workout is what he asked. Uh, if I had to say, it'd probably be sparring. Sparring is uh, really fun. You get to punch a guy, you get to kick a guy, he gets to punch you, he gets to kick you, you get to roll with him. And it's it's exhausting, but it's fun because you're, you're sparring. I mean, I love to spar, so that's probably my favorite workout. But that's it for today's video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this Let's Talk Star Wars podcast. This is number 10, long, lengthy one. I enjoyed it. Hope you did as well. Leave me some comments. Tell me your thoughts on everything below. I'll see you all next time, and may the Force be with you, always.